Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to use uh, TimeDB uh, with App Inventor. So here you can see my emulator which I've started up. And the emulator basically is showing these uh, components in the uh, in this simple login form that I've created. So there is a text box for the login, a text box for a name. Uh, the user can then submit the data by clicking on this button. And I've also created uh, two buttons for testing. Uh, purposes. The non-visible components is obviously the TinyDB, a database, and a notifier uh, for uh, providing feedback to the user. Now, before actually going to the blocks and to program the application, I want to give you a, a better idea of how my database is going to look like. And for that reason, I created a an Excel sheet. So, as uh, you might remember, let me show you the blocks. To store values in a database, you need to have both a tag and a certain value to store. So you need to decide what sort of tag are you going to have and what is going to be the values to store. Now, as you can see, I, I have a value of a login and I have a value of a name that I want to associate uh, with a certain user. So for that reason, I decided to actually use for a tag and number which I'm going to increment. So this is going to be my user 1 and this one's going to be my user 2. And for the value, I'm going to use a list in order to uh, add uh, both the login and the name uh, for each user. Now let's see how to do that in App Inventor. So since I'm going to disable this block for now, keep it on the side. Uh, since I want to insert as values in my database a list, I'm going to first get whatever input the user gives me from uh, the text boxes and insert them in a list. For that reason, I'm going to initialize a local variable, which I'm going to name uh, db values as an empty list. Now, uh, the next thing that I need to do, I need to add items to my list, that is uh, called db values, and the item, the first item is going to be the login that the user inserted in the text box. Now, afterwards, I need to add uh, one more item, which is uh, the name that the user inserted in the text box, in the text box uh, name. But uh, let's review the uh, output. Well, as uh, you can see in the emulator, well, if I just uh, add some value right here, well, actually now the code has inserted it, that item into the list, but uh, since I cannot see uh, the result of it, I'm uh, going to um, use the notifier uh, to see what actually has happened. Now, uh, in order to do that, uh, I, <coughs> I need to call the for each item in uh, the list block again the list is going to be a db value so i'm just going to duplicate this block and i'm going to call the notifier which is right here to show to show me what has actually happened so I need to get that item and show the result of uh, my action in the notifier. So if I bring back uh, the emulator now, and I'm going to insert a new value, and click on the button, I can see uh, the result of that uh, action. Now, uh, in the next video, I'm actually going to show you how to insert that list now in the database.
Hi, in this video we're gonna continue keep on working on the uh, TinyDB app for App Inventor and uh, we're gonna add uh, one very simple functionality uh, namely when uh, the user well in our case uh, in our case now for uh, the developer clicks on this button which is only for testing purposes uh, we're gonna clear uh, the database from all of the data that it has so for that reason, so this is going to be a short video, we go on the blocks. So when the clear, the button clear DB is clicked, what we need to do is to clear all values from our database and further on give uh, some feedback to the uh, user. For that reason, I duplicated that notifier uh, block and I changed uh, the notice. So let's just uh, let's just check it. I'm gonna bring up uh, the emulator. Here's the emulator. So I'm gonna add some more values right here. Now there are a few values in my database and as soon as I click this button, the clear DB button, well actually the, the database has been successfully cleared. Now uh, this was a very short video. In the next video we're going to see uh, how to get uh, some feedback on what actually exists in the database. In other words, we're going to develop the check DB uh, button. Hi, in this video we're going to continue working uh, to insert user values in, in a database. And uh, what we had uh, left the work was to actually add uh, certain items that the user inserted in the text boxes uh, to a list. And then we display them in the notifier. For the time being, we're going to remove uh, the notifier. And as we said, uh, the purpose for, of this uh, exercise is to add uh, those values in the database. So here is the store value block, which I'm going to enable it and then uh, place it right here. So as you can see, the store value block uh, has needs a value to store, and that's going to be the list that currently has only one item, the login item, so I still need to add the username item and it needs a tag. Now, uh, if you remember as a tag, what I want to do is to have a number which I'm going to increment for every user. So for that reason, I need to actually add a second local variable and I do that like this in App Inventor and I'm going to give it a descriptive name, so I'm going to call it a DB tag. Now I'm going to initialize it by actually uh, taking, uh, getting uh, the tags that already exist in the database. And in order to do that, I need to call the get tags uh, procedure. Now if you move your mouse over the block you're going to get a, uh, an, an indication of what to expect uh, from uh, this uh, procedure. And what the indication actually says is uh, that it's going to return a list of all of the tags uh, in <coughs> the data store, uh, in other words in the database. So what this procedure is going to do is going to return a list. Now, uh, what we need is actually the length of the list in order to insert it uh, in this uh, local variable. In order to get the length of the list, we need to use the length of list uh, block. So what this actually row uh, does uh, in, in the uh, in blocks of App Inventor, it gets the tags, 
the tags that already exist in tinyDB one, and then uh, pr process it as a length of list and inserts it in this uh, variable. And actually, uh, when our database uh, is empty, it's obviously going to have a length of uh, zero. So what we will need to do is, for that case, we will need to set uh, the DB tag. We need to uh, keep on increasing, in other words, uh, the uh, length of uh, tags that already exist uh, in the database. For that reason, we need to use the math block, get whatever value already exists in the db tag variable and increase it by one. So now in the case that our tiny db is empty, well the length is going to be zero. So now this line of code is going to take that zero value. Excuse me, this is actually here a mistake. What I needed to do is I needed to take the addition operator and not the equal operator. So initially our database <coughs> has zero tags, so the length of the list is going to be zero. So this, uh, the db tag variable is going to have a value of zero. Now, uh, so this is going to be zero, we're going to add it to one, so then we're actually changing uh, that variable into the value of 1. Now finally what we have to do is to get then that value Oops. get that value and insert it in the tag. So now what we actually did is we have as a tag a value that is going to keep on increasing based on the length of the tags that already exist in the database and we're going to have a value to store in the database that is going to be uh, a list. Now finally, uh, we're also going to add a feedback message to notify the user that uh, their values have been successfully inserted. So let's check uh, the emulator. So I'm going to bring back the emulator and I'm type in a login value. As you can see from uh, our code here, I'm only taking into account the login right now, so not uh, the name. So by clicking on submit data, the data where we receive the message that the data was uh, successfully inserted but uh, what has happened actually right now is that indeed the data has been stored uh, in our tiny db now in the next video uh, i'm going to show you how to actually clear the database for testing purposes uh, and how to check uh, the database again for, st for testing purposes and we're also going to add uh, the second uh, value uh, in our form or the second item in our form which is uh, the name.